have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. All of those wires, all of them, they all go inside of here. Look at that. And of course, the three that come out here. These, poof, they'll go bye-bye. Look how many wires. And you know what the best part about it is? There's no sign anywhere that there's wires in these rails. No sign of wires in the rails. Nothing. None of these have wires in the rails. See that? Nothing. No wires in the rails. Anyway, stay tuned. I'll show you how I got this far. Woo! It's blurry. What's up, everybody? My name's Russ, ArdoesResearch.com, as you know. So, uh, yeah, it's 5.50 a.m., August 22nd. I'm tired. Okay, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Well, we're kind of playing in the dark right now. We are at the shop. And yeah, we're gonna put this bad boy together. So, briefly, I forgot to, to actually like demonstrate and show you exactly how these pieces go together. So I'm going to do that real quick, just for your sake. I told you I would. And then as I put this other stuff together, I'll give you a little more details on that. Um, yeah, let's do that first. Okay, so this is the overview. Uh, it's real simple. Basically, you have these pre-cut uh, machined pieces. And you've got these aluminum pieces. And then you've got the braces and the, and the bolts. So originally, what you do is you just pop a bolt inside there. Uh, I don't know which way is which. Yeah, this is actually the factory end. Okay, so it goes in like this, and then you put on this plate, which is a bit tricky to do one-handed. All right, so you put on this plate, then you put the other one in the other side like that. Then you have to tighten it inside inside that channel, which is a bit fun. But if you have a, uh, a round bottom thingamabob, it's not so bad. And then, obviously, this slides in there, and you clamp it down. So what happens is, is that, uh, we'll fill out. This actually just pulls up against the bottom side of here, compresses this down there. And that's it. It's real simple. So that's how these go together. And then these work very, very similarly. Where I've machined that a long time ago in like the first couple of the videos at the beginning of this year. And then I went ahead and took, uh, these are for double, double extrusions. So two ways like this. Now I took those because it's the only ones I had and I cut them in half. And then I'm using those for the um, anchors for this. Because this is actually a, a custom cut piece. I cut that myself. So, yeah. That's it. I just wanted to show you that because I know I told you I was going to. And so, there you go. It's pretty simple stuff. I like it. Obviously, this whole stuff is square because of how everything lines up. And, yeah. Let's finish this thing. Well, here we are. So... I needed to show you a few things I did off camera. I got lazy one day. Lazy. I got up super freaking early and came in here and worked on this thing. That's not lazy. Anyway, I didn't film it because uh, I didn't think it was too exciting. Basically, I heat shrinked a lot of this. I took, I actually, I remember when I originally told you that once I put these two pieces together, I may never be able to get them apart. That's actually not true. I could actually pull these apart, and I did, and I heat shrink these better and differently. And I also machined out this slot right here. So one of the one of the serious issues was how am I supposed to hide all this wiring once I get you know once I get it up to the top? 
the motor wire is not too too bad but how am I supposed to hide this so I actually ended up designing and 3d printing these little pieces these little pieces whoa 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 wait a minute I got some important things to tell you before we go on all the parts that you're seeing in this silverish grayish color is from rigid dot ink they have been kind enough to actually sponsor this filament for me for this project and everyone is really excited right now aren't you yeah okay so I encourage you to go check out rigid dot ink they are a supporter yeah. of this project and I've also got some other stuff coming up to deal with their filament but for now I wanted to make sure you knew that they sponsored this under their own terms. I actually asked them to. They were going to send me some free filament and I said, hey, want to be a sponsor of my work? And they said, yeah, maybe. Okay, let's get back to the video. You ready? Yeah. Okay. We'll actually be going right here. Okay, and they'll be actually housing the breakout circuit boards all right so all this wire will be going inside of this crack right here which is exactly inside there see fingers actually in the plastic and uh yeah that's it so it took me several tries and i'm going to actually show you some quick time lapse right now All right, that was brief but interesting to watch sometimes. So I've done that to all three of these and I've heat shrinked these a little bit differently as you can see. So we're gonna try to put these together with these in there. This will do several things. One, it will give me a place to put my wires and hide them and use them as a breakout board. It'll also house everything to come out the bottom and anything I need to come out the top. And just in general, I actually spent the extra time to make these look like the rails. Alright, let's do it. This is what I've done. I have taken some of this Kapton tape. This is really good stuff for sharp edges and wires and things. And I've taped, this is hard to see, but I've taped all the edges on the inside of these because as these wires come around these corners, they are pretty sharp corners. And I'm quite concerned about the wires vibrate, like over time vibrating and cutting in. I'm not too worried about the first installment, but I'm worried about long term, long term which is why I also heat shrink these deeper. So yeah, that took all of like 25 minutes. Anyway, now we're going to actually tighten these bars and make sure they're square. So how I'm gonna do that, I happen to have this grid. This is for a laser system, right? So you lay out your laser on this, uh, this is called a breadboard. It's aluminum. And it is about as flat as a surface can get at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these down sideways and I'm gonna actually uh, tighten that Tighten everything down with a particular measurement just to get it set, even though later I may have to move it a little. That'll at least make sure that the edges are flat and square with one side. Oh, here is how this goes together. It's very simple. Um, because I don't have the right size bolts and the right size washers, I found these nice nuts that I love using, these knurled nuts or whatever they call them, with the uh, flare on them. <clears throat> A regular stainless bolt, and then again that half cut piece I showed you earlier. So, I just put this on here like this. It goes through the hole that I machined, like that. And this piece goes on here like this. That's it. And then this piece slides in here. This is really hard to do one-handed, you know that? Anyway, 
slides in there like that and that's how it actually gets clamped together so pretty simple Do I look thrilled? It's kind of hot in here today already for being so early. Anyway, I did manage to get this thing in one piece and yeah, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, originally I thought you could just slide the whole beam in and all this stuff, but because I got the wires where they are, uh, it's just not that easy. So these three pieces have to slide inside that channel which indeed they do and they works fine it's just it's just really difficult I hope I put them in the right way because these are orientated in the these actually the bottoms are actually thicker than the tops anyway and then here the the motor you know if I ever want to replace this motor mount I gotta disassemble the whole thing which again I, because this is all gonna be plug-in plates it's not a disaster but it sure isn't fun so uh, I did put everything, you know, as you saw on here and made it sure it was flat and everything. Oh, now, uh, now to get the wires into the right spots, let's, uh, let's just try that real quick. Let's try to get those wires in the right spots, or at least some of them. I don't re recall off the top of my head which ones I had to plan to go where, but I know where some of them go. Well, if that doesn't give you the visual that I spend a lot of time hiding wire, then you just don't know what you're looking at, man. Okay, check it out. Ow, that kind of hurt. <laughs> uh, so these are all the bottoms. We don't worry about those. These are the motors. They will be hidden. Right now they're exposed, but when I get the time, I'll put the wires on here. Now the top, as you can see, there's nothing more in the middle. And from the bottom, if I pull the all effect wires up, from the bottom, you cannot see any wires, yeah? There will be circuit boards in there. I haven't shown you that part just yet. But uh, yeah, from the top, obviously, there's a bunch of wires coming up. So each one of these bundles has a place to go and has a terminal to be in. And there's some interconnecting wires that have to be in place as well, but yeah, that's that's really about all the time I have for today. The only other thing I'm going to do today is put the feet on, so let me show you those. Oh, by the way, I did Kapton tape everything I could. As you can see, I wrapped Kapton tape around this wire, so as it goes around this bend, it doesn't get torn up. I did not do that to these wires, but I did do that to, uh, to this side, too. Anyway, just a side note. So here are the feet. These are feet off of an old uh, copy machine or something. I think it came from a photo. I, I don't remember. I do remember. I don't remember the name. A thing. A mailing thing. Anyway, big machine. Pretty heavy. And uh, I used the inserts that were already in there and I just 3D printed these little feet. Slide right into the channel. And the, this is really, really hard rubber so it's plenty enough support. And that gets it off the ground. That does two things. One, that allows for airflow. I want a lot of airflow underneath this, so that gives me the airflow. I have aluminum extrusions that are double thick, basically two of these stacked together. And I thought, you know, that would give me more room and everything. But I already I cut at these angles, and that would just be a nightmare if I had to do that the other way. Also, I could just replace these, which are also doubles, and then everything would be a lot taller. But then I have a huge gap in the bottom, and I just, I really just didn't want that. So, yeah, those are the feet. Let's put the feet on real quick and uh, just, you know, keep it simple, stupid. The KISS method. Wow. Okay, I think my job is done here for the day. 
I got uh, I got where I wanted. The only issue is, is I really want to do something different with these motor mounts, and that's practically impossible without like completely taking this back apart, which is kind of a small disaster. I told you guys I was sort of shooting myself in the foot when I want to hide these wires, but you got to remember I'm building a sleek and stealthy looking piece of equipment, so. The RWG OSD. Feet are done. See how much room I got under there now? And I'll have plenty of airflow under there. And they're, you know, they're a little squishy, like, but still very, very sturdy and strong. So if the thing, my other printer, when it really gets to going, it'll oscillate a little bit. So now the other thing I need to do is I want to make me a machined bar that I can put between these two points and these two points and I'll actually get the bars re-squared up in case some of this because I went off the edges so you gotta remember that's not perfect it's pretty close but not perfect so I'm gonna do that eventually alright peace and love have a good day the end of this video is over thanks for watching hope you enjoyed leave a comment suggestions things stuff to think about let me know this is a pretty wild build and uh, yeah I'm pretty pleased with how this looks. It's pretty cool to say you can walk around and you cannot see any electrical and yet there's wires coming out of the top and out of the bottom. I like that. I like that a lot. I like it a lot, man. Okay, see ya. I don't think he's liking it. <laughs> are you guys going to help me make this video or are you going to be a giant distraction? Huh? All right, all you have to do is be really quiet. Okay. <clears throat> Come here, Malachi. Come here. Come here. Okay. Oh yeah, I was gonna actually print something while making this video though. So I have to wait.